All right. Good morning, traders. Can you see me and hear? Uh, I'm I'm sorry. See my screen and hear me. If you can, can you type yes in the questions? I think it's uh, working. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Yes in the questions. Uh, in the uh, hashtag advanced dash uh, webinars. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, David. Excellent. Okay. So uh, I'm good to go. Uh, you guys can see my screen and hear me. Uh, so let's jump in. Today we have Jay Trader. Uh, he'll be uh, presenting uh, uh, and going through his his trades. Um, uh, God, I'm off to a bad start here. Let me back up. So uh, Jay Trader will be trading live uh, in here. Uh, it is in demo uh, paper trading mode, but the 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 um, uh, it is the way that he trades stocks. Uh, and uh, this is the education uh, that you get with the bookmap. Uh, Global Plus subscription. It is free in here for now. Uh, just these last few weeks during the holidays uh, before we kind of get up and running here in the new year. Uh, uh, so we just thought we'd uh, extend it uh, at, free to everybody uh, and so they can get a taste of what's going on uh, with our education. So when you subscribe to Bookmap, you get access to our four-part educational course that's online. Uh, and then we have three days a week, we have live forward-looking analysis uh, so we'll read the current market in the order flow and then give insight to where we think price is going to move next. Uh, the key uh, is to apply what you've learned from the course in the live market. Uh, and uh, what better way to do that uh, than reading the live current market and then uh, giving insight to where price may go next. So you can uh, really apply what you've learned there. You can ask questions. Uh, and integrate this into your trading strategies. Uh, then we always get the questions about like, okay, that's great. Uh, now I can read order flow, but how do I trade it? Uh, well, Bookmap's not a trading strategy. Uh, it is a platform. Uh, there are many different trading strategies. We will cover it in those webinars uh, and also trade management, but there's many different ways to trade. So we're not gonna cover one specific way. Uh, so then we offer the live trading from a few different traders uh, so you can learn very specific ways of trading from them. Uh, if you want to apply that or not, uh, that's up to you. Uh, we're bringing on Tom B uh, as well. Uh, he'll be streaming live uh, in Discord um, in a couple weeks. Uh, January 18th, I think, is his first day. Um, so uh, you can learn from another trader. He's going to be looking at volume profiles. Uh, and trading futures. So, uh, you, you know, we're um, starting to stream more and more uh, uh, and uh, offer uh, different trading styles and uh, to meet, you know, your, your guys' needs. So today we have Jay Trader, a stocks trader. Tomorrow we have um, Scott Pulsini, a futures trader uh, at 10 a.m. So Jay Trader will be in in a little bit. Uh, we'll keep an eye out in the uh, chat here for him. Uh, so uh, uh, let's go through some disclosures, though. Uh, and uh, you guys know who he is. He's been trading for quite a while. Um, you have his trader um, uh, contact information here as well. You've got his website, his um, uh, email, and, and Twitter, YouTube, special offers from him, etc. I'll put these into the chat, um, uh, you know, once we get going here so that if you want to reach out to him, you will have the links specifically. You don't have to copy this down here. Uh, all right, let's go through the disclosures. And, and for the first... Uh, 15 minutes or so, 10 minutes. Um, I'll just go through the live analysis of the S&P E-mini uh, and follow up a little bit with uh, yesterday's action and, and what's going on right now. Uh, and then we'll turn it over to JTrader. Uh, all right, so the general disclosures, and these are important. So please listen, uh, understand what you're getting involved in here. Uh, it, we're not here to just kind of lurk in this room and, and uh, use this uh, education as a trade copy or service. Uh, that would be really kind of uh, dangerous and irresponsible. Uh, this is all for educational purposes only, right? So all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. 
risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so that said, let's jump in. Let's take a look at this S&P. Uh, and uh, also uh, yesterday, so we're going to look at the higher time frame and uh, kind of also review like um, uh, yesterday I kind of struggled with uh, reading the order flow um, uh, and uh, was looking for something specific to unfold and it didn't uh, so uh, uh, we'll uh, review a little bit of that as well uh, and uh, uh, well it did and it didn't I should say like that we, we were looking for some scenarios to unfold and they did uh, and then uh, there was other scenarios that did not so what did I do wrong? How, how, how can I improve? Um, uh, and uh, I want to address that uh, because uh, it, it's really important to debrief your trading, learn from it, adjust, and then move forward. Uh, better informed uh, and more prepared uh, and looking for even higher probability trades uh, than uh, just a few days ago. So uh, looking at the higher time frame here, um, we see this uh, nice move to the upside into the new year uh, in just uh, a few days up here. Uh, you know, we, we broke all-time highs just the other day, uh, and we're right back into the range now on the daily chart. Okay, so we're kind of stuck in this range here. We do see some buying wicks in here okay, on both sides. Uh, I'm sorry, buying wicks on the bottom, sell, sell wicks on the top here. So it makes, makes sense that we're just kind of right in the middle uh, of this area here. That's the daily chart. Uh, I don't see too much on the daily chart to, to look at except for maybe the swing from the other day here. Uh, let's just take a quick look. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, the swing uh, yesterday here and then look at today. We've come down and kind of tested this little area or low here and haven't broken it yet. All right. So uh, just, you know, it seems to be in the day's range uh, from yesterday. Uh, looking at the hourly chart here, okay, uh, it, we're looking at uh, uh, this back and forth here. Look at the dip here uh, below uh, the um, uh, uh, the swing, and then uh, move back up, and this is where it broke into all-time highs, and then we can see we're right back into the range. Not seeing much on this daily or this hourly chart here. Uh, looking at a five-minute, or we can look at a 15-minute here. That's what, typically what we do. Um, looking at uh, uh, again, you know, uh, wicks down here, wicks up here, uh, just, you know, right back in the middle of the range. Uh, not seeing much of an edge right now at the moment, all right, on these higher time frames. Okay, Joseph is in here, so we can turn it over. So, guys, we won't get to the analysis here. Uh, but uh, even even looking at the live uh, market right now, boy, not really seeing much. I mean, you see the, the initial move to the downside here. Uh, and, it, you know, it's been holding. Uh, so it's still kind of below this this uh, um, area here at 4783, uh, and uh, and it's come back down and, and kind of tested where it broke out from in here, uh, and this little structural area in here. Uh, but boy, just you know, not not seeing much right now. It's pretty pretty kind of narrow range uh, that we're looking at here. And uh, this is the bigger range right here. All right, so uh, yeah, anyway, um, we'll maybe address uh, uh, some of the yesterday's, uh, um, or maybe I can just uh, quickly uh, say it. Like, um, I think uh, if, I, if I debrief uh, some of the um, analysis yesterday, there was assumption of like a gap fill to take place, which did take place. We were looking for that scenario. Uh, and then we're looking for a bounce though. And we were reading the order flow and we never got it. We never got that bounce. Uh, uh, it, it actually, the order flow or the, um, the webinar ended and we did get to see a one bounce, but then it went back down to, to lows again. Uh, it, it did retest that uh, 4780 area we were looking for, uh, and then, uh, but it, it didn't go higher. Uh, and, and then finally it did uh, yesterday, um, but uh, the, um, uh, let's look at it here. Uh, yeah, we were looking for this bounce up into here. Uh, we did get that, 47.87. That, yeah, we're looking for 87. Then we went back down again. 
Uh, and you can see we came all the way back up. This is the move we were looking for here, but we were looking for it over here. And I, I think maybe just holding on to some bias in here, not reading the order flow, thinking like, okay, well, we should bounce, right? Like uh, we, we filled the gap. We should be bouncing. Uh, we're not. Uh, so uh, we got it. Order flow rules. Uh, and just let the chart tell us. Let the order flow tell us. Uh, and stay away from bias. Uh, and then uh, uh, start to look for uh, uh, areas where price might go based on what we can objectively read in the order flow. Enough. All right. So let's turn it over to uh, Joseph and uh, let him take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph, for uh, giving me a minute or two in there. Good morning, Bruce. Can you hear me good? Yes, perfect. Okay. Good morning, traders. We'll uh, start the screen share over here. Okay, you should be able to see my bookmap screen with the chart. I want to pass right away uh, into the uh, play that we're uh, trading. Uh, ILXT, uh, as we said, we are talking about a small float. Uh, this uh, stock float rotated multiple times. Uh, ILXT has uh, also dilution uh, as a former runner, so a history of extending. And this morning, it plays exactly like yesterday on PSTV, and we shorted over here the top. Uh, we got the uh, 308, 310, uh, taking some profit down to the 251. And now I personally add over here in the 272. So uh, we had this uh, 275 resistance over here on Bookmap. So I'm averaging my size, my, my, um, my price, because with a 308 and then 275 add with some covers, now I'm risking in the money and the trade is going good. Uh, I could see the price section over here being very wild. So we are really going from uh, uh, supply demand, supply demand shift. Uh, some good trades that we had this morning over here, for example, this is uh, Chad. So uh, looking to take the top into that heat map resistance. And when I say heat map resistance, we were looking at this three and you can see that three dollar level. So we are really going over, under, over, under. And then over here again, put the top heat map above. This is a gap and extension play. So we rate for the fail of the pre-market high, which is this three dollar level. And then heat map joined us over here as sellers. And we can see a lower highs, lower lows environment. Then push into the VWAP. We had the big sell off. I love this. So I see over here, uh, you sell off. So, so uh, supply and control. Then over here, they try to prop it. Remember that when we have dilution traders, and this is really a common theme on a shell company. You know what is a shell company? It's basically a stock that uh, doesn't have almost any uh, earnings or any profits. Uh, doesn't have any kind of, uh, uh, I would say, uh, revenue and lives only through dilution. So they need to raise through offering in order to survive. This is a shell company. Basically, they're selling paper. Then the second time over here, they had uh, a bounce just into that supply. And I'm sure that each time, or at least this is a main possibility because I know how these work with the micro shells. Each time they have a huge amount of liquidity that holds a support, the mast over here. So the big hands dump into those retailer traders in order to find some accumulation and some liquidity to hold their price. It's absolutely a great environment for me shorting a company like this, but only if I short the tops. I can never look for breakdowns. I want to short always the tops and liquidity. Uh, 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 Joseph, Joseph um, uh, just a, a couple of things. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but it is kind of important. Um, uh, there's a max of 50 that can view um, the uh, 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 the webinar here uh, in the, the stream. Um, I'm restreaming it, so if you can't get into and watch J Trader's screen, uh, click on mine. You'll see the two live tabs there uh, in the left margin of uh, of um, Discord. Uh, so you'll see the same thing that uh, uh, we're all seeing here from J Trader. Uh, and then um, uh, let's see. Secondly, um, uh, what was I going to say here about uh, um, 
the chart. <laughs> I kind of forgot. Uh, so yeah, ne never mind. That that was the most important. Uh, uh, jo oh uh, yeah, I was. I remember. Um, uh, Joseph. So uh, a shell company like you're going to have some some issues trying to get a hold of those uh, shares. Uh, so uh, maybe you can articulate a little bit on on how you do that. Okay, absolutely. Uh, I just want to post something over here. One second. Um, let me find uh, this. Okay, so when I say that I'm basically looking for those uh, pops over here to short means really this, okay? And that is in into this liquidity that you can see over here. So I'm looking for those massive levels of liquidity where I can have my trade short and risking very tight because I have a higher average. So I'm averaging for example, in the 289, now I was risking 276. So now I'm holding J lines over here. If we break the J lines, I want to see this dump. The same process I have on the long side. So I'm using J lines like yesterday we had on LSP all morning in order to take the long setups. So I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about uh, filings because uh, I think is one of the most important matters if you trade not only small caps but also mid caps and big caps together so first of all very fast okay we'll do very fast we're not going to do a lesson on that but in order to understand the price liquidity over here and meantime mama beer is following the trades ilxt we have a microflow company so five million and very small market cap so right away when you see a five million float, float is the amount of shares you can buy in a stock in the in the stock market. Then you know that you need only five million over here to flow rotate. Generally, when you have a flow rotation, if you're gonna have a huge amount of dilution, the stock can be possibly become um, a runner. And also we can see one thing over here: they try to pump the news with this tumors over here i went to read this and it's basically more fluff news than really like something uh tangible uh because we have a no phase two or phase three final endpoint met we're only talking about over here some clinical stage okay clinical stage it's not a phase two primary endpoint met or a phase three final endpoint met all right then when i'm looking at dilution I first look at uh, financials over here, and you can see that they basically have a negative net income. So they have zero revenues. And how you think they're gonna pay their employees if they have some? How are they gonna pay the CEO? How are they gonna pay the marketing? How are they gonna pay the press release, the drug uh, um, trials and everything? With some company that has only 6 million of cash and is burning per month, 300K, All right? How? Through dilution. There are several ways, S1, warrants, uh, um, ATM, shelf, and blah, blah. I'm gonna share with you, uh, just to be faster, I use the dilution tracker, but the same thing can be done if you go on, uh, on the SEC filings and start to look and dig in into the company. In the meantime, we have the next stuff, stuff over here again, into that, this is really a stuff, so we're gonna talk about later, I'm still holding my position. And we're going to talk about how the illusion works. So company over here has not registered, okay, not registered warrants. So they cannot be exercised right now. And they can only exercise if the price goes to six. So these are contracts, okay? Warrants are contracts. I was trading, the first thing I traded in my life was covert warrants. Uh, then over here, we have registered IPO warrants at 5.50, million at 5.70. So they need the price of 5, 5.70 in order for this to be exercised. 1.497 um, million. The, the price this morning was 3.1, so they never uh, been exercised. What I like over here that we have a West Park ATM so atm means the capacity over here to dump at the market okay at the market this means whenever they want and they can raise 10 million all right over here 10 million also they have a being that they are under baby shelf they have only 1.8 million of current raisable through shelf all right this is an s3 if it will be a foreign company you will have a f3 
So when we have now, let's get back to uh, our price section. And I'm going to do like this. Okay, I'm going to use Bookmate to explain you what they do. Because this is every single day that I see it. Okay, And I wrote even a manual of 25 pages uh, describing this called my manipulation page. And since 2017, I'm basically explaining this stuff. Uh, this is the price section this morning. Okay, so I was explaining the room and also in the streaming pre-market, I said exactly this. You can go read and watch the streaming on YouTube. And I said 10 minutes before the open. I believe they're, they're going to create a huge amount of liquidity at three at the gate. And at the three will have like the big hands. So the, uh, the big hands who are the ones behind the company that will ones that are holding the shares that they want over here to dilute and how they will do it you cannot simply wait that you have a breakdown price is 260 and you're gonna dilute over here raising 10 million because the price will do this we're gonna hold down and you know what they're gonna not raise anything or at least not enough they need to raise as much as possible so you know over here that if i dilute at 280 i dilute at three I diluted 330. What will be better? 330 because it will make more profit. Okay. So they try to prop it. If they create an environment over here with algos, with some orders, uh, sometimes with spoofing, but also tracking over here, uh, retailers looking, uh, in, inviting them to buy on the breakouts. Okay. So creating in breakouts over here. We had a break over here this morning, 309, and it went 310 over here. This was the top. And what happened? When they're pushing over here, so when over here we have buyers at the open, because everybody wants to buy this, it's about tumor. No, traders. Reason that you need to know which uh, news move the market, okay? So what happens over here? When they push it, we have over here the dilution in X. So they're dumping partial of the shelf. And, that, and not they're going to dump at these lows, right? Over here, we have some liquidity formation. So we have some support and this support, Bruce now will laugh because every time I say this is together with the J lines. So you see over here, uh, these two white lines. I'm going to do like this. Maybe I'm going to bring it up uh, bigger. This is fantastic, really fantastic over here. This is my. OK, this is fantastic. So you can see over here those two white lines, right? Those two white lines are J lines. And you can see the main liquidity where we have it, just at the J lines. So they're not going to dump on this weakness. No, they're going to wait over here. They basically uh, release the paddle of the gas. So they're not dumping over here. I believe that maybe they're even buying something to prop over here, the price action. And when we have this VWAP, you know that always there is the shift, the VWAP between buyers and sellers, right? So what do you think they're going to do, traders? I'm really expecting you to answer. Charu, uh, Chris, Mike, I know that you're over here today. Leaves. What do you think they're going to do at the VWAP? They're going to wait for those possible breakout traders coming in over here, 270, 275 for a breakout, and then they will dump on them. So they're really waiting that they get over here to dump size. Because like this, they're going to uh, raise the 10 million. If it's possible today, they're going to raise 10 million. All right. If it will be a price not enough for them, I mean, they need cash. They need cash very bad over here. Right. They cannot live a long time with the 6 million if they want to do all these drug trials they're saying. Is it clear, traders? Make sense? Question on this. Okay, if you have questions, just like reach out over here in the chat room of the advanced webinar. Now let's look at the price section. So I'm still holding my trade, my position. This morning I've been trading this short. I've been trading long and short. Uh, M I N N Z. M I N Z that I'm still holding my trade. Uh, I can share over here. Yes, my beer, thank you. I'm still holding my, sh uh, my trade. It's an easy trade. It's a, it's a fail of day lines and a rejection. So I missed the pop perfect as I wanted because I missed this entry over here into the day lines. I short over here. 
And now I just took a little bit profit over here to pay myself. And since it's making lower highs, I'm holding. So my trade over here started into the 17s, risking 30 cents. I'm making over here already eight hour return. All right. And this why I'm going to explain you uh, one main um, one main scenario. This is IMNZ. IMNZ is a scenario, if I can say about, uh, if I can say traders, it's a fuckery because they have no dilution. They have no history of failure. Recent IPO, micro float, multiple floor rotation. As I wrote this morning, and I, I state this again, I made two plans. The first plan was to look for long because all this environment tells me, AJ, hey, look for a long side, right? And if you go over here and we go over here, the watch list this morning, I said, M I N Z, this scenario is for a long. Even I shortened it to almost two bucks per share. Scenario gives us a long bias. So I'm looking if I have J line curl. J line curl, I didn't have it. So we always need to prepare for a short side with a J line rejection. Exactly what happened. So this is not because I know what will happen. I prepare myself if the price will come to me. Before Bruce said something. I mean, he says clever things, uh, clever things, but this is very clever. And he said, Jay and traders, wait the price comes to you and wait that bookmap shows you. The same thing for me, wait that the pattern shows you. So when at the open, I was waiting for the Jalen rejection that was over here, look what we have above. This is not me or Bruce trying to top over here, right? This is a really like a big seller over here. 30,000 and 26,000. So somebody wants to dump over here and hold the price down. So when I see this together with my strategy, I'm comfortable joining short. And if you see this price section over here, each time we have a bear flag. So this, this, this. I joined exactly this bear pattern over here. Or I believe this. No, this one over here. Sorry, this over here. I joined over here short. My risk was just above here. And then each time started to make a lower high. Now they find a little bit of liquidity, also whole round dollar number. Okay. And you can see over here my heat map and times in sales, in this case, times in sales is filtered only to find the big blocks. Why? Because I'm not really interested in looking for $100, 100 shares at the time. Who cares for that? Makes sense, traders? Really tell me if you have any questions on this. Now, Getting back to ILXT, I think I'm going to follow this being is the, the one right now that is moving with a little bit more liquidity. Uh, this is, a, as we said, a 5 million float. And it flow rotated over here about uh, 13 times, no, uh, 15 times. Okay. We can do like this. I'm going to put it and see if this works. 15 million. 5 million, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 6, all right. So all the lines that you see below, okay, each one of these lines is a flow rotation. It's a flow rotation, flow rotation, flow rotation, flow rotation. So look only one hour from this 9.30 till 10.30, how many times we flow rotate over here? We flow rotated 16 times, right? Once we flow rotated, then they bought the entire float and they sold it. They bought the entire float and they sold it. They bought the entire float and they sold it. And so on, over and over and over. I trade small caps, big caps, crypto, and futures. Lately, what I'm doing the most is really uh, trading size on crypto, much size, uh, being that I'm investing them. Uh, but other thing is, I love to day trade over here stocks because they give me very low risk with these scenarios and very comfortable to trade in with, uh, with Bookmap together. Now we're going to look for other setups. Today I was not looking to trade big caps. Uh, the last trade I took was a 70 point swing on Tesla till that 1200. But it's two days I'm not touching over here big caps because they are counter trend into the hourly JLAS. So I'm only trading today these two small caps that you see over here.
So 240 over here, we have a micro support on uh, uh, on ILXT, awaiting the crack. So why I'm not taking profit? Because gap and extension is a setup that I tracked, is a setup that I trade from many years. And once I fill the one minute day lines, I'm staying for that $192, which is the five minute day lines. This doesn't mean I'm shorting and I'm not gonna stop out if a trade reverses on me, okay? No, I'm gonna trade this short and hold short until we're gonna make lower highs. What I mean by that, this is a high, this is a lower high, all lower highs, okay? Over here we go to touch that lower high and cracking, this is a lower high. So until my price section formed this, why I have to take profit out? Why I have to really uh, cut my wins? And uh, one of the reasons why traders are not making money is because when they stop, they stop large. Because often they wait, they pray, and they think that the trade will uh, restart in their direction, okay? It's not this. Market doesn't really listen to you, okay? Uh, really respect more the price section and order flow. It's really helpful. And when you have a trade that is working, leave it there. Use your trailing in the best way. For me, it's really using the Z lines and using the lower highs when I'm short and high lows when I'm long. And then stay with it. Have patience. Sit in your hands. Okay? You can even put over here a stop loss order and you go for a walk. Sometimes, trust me, is much better. You know traders yourself. If you would have put your stop loss and walk away so many times, you will probably be much more winner and uh, rich than how you are right now. So three faders this morning. I'll extend. LGVN. M-I-N-Z, M-Y-N-Z. Uh, rule over here, very simple, okay? So it's not that all time will be like this, but see this red that you can see here? You see the price below the J lines? That's your short. Uh, me getting short uh, over here and now holding with each lower high you see how it's dumping right why i need to cover this i took only a small over here to pay myself it to reduce my risk which was over here and now i'm simply holding if you look at lixt you have a different setup which involves knowing the levels because there's a stuff over here move a stuff over here move and now we have the daily rejection. So until this makes lower high, we can hold this, all right? And the last one was LGBN. So let's continue to watch this. What I'm looking right now is the formation of more levels of heat map uh, above my uh, above the actual price. So when we have a ladder and a stair step down ladder, we want that each 
level forms a resistance. That gives me a cushion. So in case things go wrong and I need to exit my position, I will use these heat maps. So this is a very good trailing strategy that I use together with the lower, lower highs that will protect my exit. Okay, as you know, if you trade some size, let's say 50,000 over here, and you need to get out, I mean, 50,000, me and other traders will get out at this 260, boom, it will push simply up, right? But if you have instead some big resistance above, some big level of liquidity supply, then I have time to exit, others have time to exit, so I get, uh, I don't get squeezed. That's the main point, okay? So you have to focus on this stuff as well. You have to calculate. Is that a good level to exit? Creating a bear flag over here. See the volume is all red below. Soon they're gonna flow rotate again. Good morning, you again. Glad to have you here, buddy. Let's wait on Alex T. Okay. Let's leave Alex T over here. So if we're gonna have 250, 255, we'll probably add being a Dylan rejection. I need to see the tape in that moment and the order flow. Uh, I'm gonna put one second over here, M, Y, and Z. So another, stock that is fading 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 and we are short from the 17s over here this level and now again lower highs or lower lows lower highs lower highs lower highs so a bit a big rule over here an important rule for me in order to protect parts of the profit being that i'm still around three-fourths of my position in and this is paying already almost two bucks if we're going to reclaim the 15, uh, 1550, I'm going to trail at least half of what I have in order to protect myself, in order to, you know, to have something in my pockets. Okay. I don't see a main support down here. Uh, Bruce? Yes? Uh, there are some traders in advanced webinar. Uh, can you answer them, please? Yes. Okay, this is what I was saying this morning. Uh, reason why I didn't want to trade Tesla, Apple, Nvidia. Uh, look over here. So I trade yes, thank you, Tesla, Apple. Uh, but I said one thing, hourly daylines, this will be an inside day waiting for direction before taking a trade, okay? Every single day I tend to 
look at these. For example, I, I look to trade daily ES, BABA, T Tesla, Apple, and so on, Facebook. But the point is that if I look at the scenario, the market scenario today, we see that we are at the day, uh, hourly J lines. And for me, this is a big support. So yesterday we were fading, we were fading over here, you can see the reversal. And this morning we dipped into this area and now we're consolidating. Until I don't see some very big uptrend established like we had in the last days, I'm not going to trade this. Same for Apple. And you can see Apple over here is even uh, fading below the J lines, right? It's going below. And same for ES, which this morning was just at the J lines and now it's simply lateral over here. So I cannot trade something like this, right? Um, my day trading system over here uh, makes me enter on ES long at this level, long at this level, long at this level, long at this level long at this level each time i'm able to get the dips each time i'm able to get the dips this surely for a swing uh purpose okay now if i look at lixt this is what it's been doing today so it traded the highest volume ever we can see that it's a stock that has multiple extension one two three four five six each time faded so it means that it's a stock that gives back on the same day even if it gets up we have history of closing red on the day okay bounce over here on m y and z as we said, remember, traders, if we break the 1550, then I'm going to trail partial over here. So I'm focusing over here. Do I have a resistance 1550? Not really. I have a small amount of resistance. Okay. And I like to zoom out because I need to see uh, the supply levels above. And right now you can see supply demand almost one to one so look over here fifteen forty five we have a little bit of resistance some sellers over here 1545 which is the previous relative high okay the relative high over here was at 1545 so on the breach of this so if we can have a clear out of that 1545 i'm gonna exit a uh, half of my position Still at 42, you see, they're finding resistance. Look, the seller over here, 44, 45, 46, 45 level over here. It's not a big resistance, okay? Because before we had huge amount of resistance, but it's still holding as this is the previous relative high. Nobody, I'm not going to add over here because it's only a small resistance. If I had a big heat map, let's say 30, 40K plus, then I could add more, lower my average, and risk that uh, new uh, heat map 
as partial of my new trailing. So over here, still unwinding, uh, we have LIXT still unwinding. So you can see that uh, we are talking about the bear flag. Bear flag came over here, so good, uh, good spot, right? It's behaving pretty good over here, LIXT. If uh, I believe there are some traders over here in my room, I believe they took it. And then LGVN. Which I have no position on LGVN, but it's one of those stocks that I'm interested to follow. Uh, I trade a lot of volume over here, uh, 11 million. So I would say no, I trade a small amount of volume versus the others. But it's a stock that trade a lot of volume in the past has a huge amount of bag holders. Well done, Gondo. Well done, buddy. LXT, good. MY and ZN, okay, there we are. So get out. As I said, trailing half of what I had left on MY and Z. For the reason that we, break, we broke that previous relative high. So now I will still hold half of my position, being average is high, around 16.84. And I'm looking if it's 16, I can add more. So I'm not really waiting for the 16. I'm looking ready at bookmap. If I have a liquidity uh, to test that level. Beautiful, Mugen. So making over here higher lows, mins. It's pretty light over here. You can see there's not that huge amount of liquidity like we had before. Even on the on the resistance above, you can see it pushes like 30, 40 cents easily. I'm not adding short yet. I'll explain if I'm going to add short. I want to see how I retest over here this uh, day lines. And also there's a lot of spread. 65, 75, 65, 80. Not really looking to trade this. Very illiquid right now in the sense that even if you look at the the orders over here, the max order is three thousand, and it's very very liquid. So holding my position short, my last trailing is sixteen. Okay, so sixteen ten, and my average sixteen point eighty four. So if we have a a, a clear out of the sixteen zero five sixteen ten, I'm out. LXT still continue to fade. So when we talk about company that needs cash, think about traders uh, LIXT, okay? Uh, Joseph, I have a question for you. Like uh, with the um, filtering in the morning, uh, I mean, you you nicely went through like 
uh, already finding the stock and then finding out more about the stock, like who are they, uh, what is their flow, what is their financials, um, uh, their fundamentals, uh, what kind of company are they, what, what do they have warrants, uh, what kind mm -hmm. of news is out there. Uh, and mm -hmm. then really, um, uh, you know, ascertaining like if it's a value, if this is a valuable company or not, or is it fluff, et cetera, um, which then kind of dictates the trading style. Um, the um, uh, maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about like, uh, you know, what time like pre-market or how you start to even find these to begin with. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that, that can be kind of, uh, uh, for newer traders, uh, uh, kind of challenging uh, to filter for. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, we can go to like, you know, uh, some website and find out, you know, big big gainers um, for the day. But uh, what about like pre-market or um, uh, previous days, et cetera, uh, and how you kind of filter for that? Okay. So, uh, as I said, traders, I trade multiple uh uh, assets. Uh, for example, for crypto, I have a, a specific way to find my, uh, say, my new altcoins that I want to look for. For big caps, I look at mainly the structure on the daily, and I look the structure of uh, these main. We'll post over here. These main stocks. Give me one second. So these are the stocks that I that I look at every single day. It's basically uh, these are basically the stocks with uh, more liquidity, uh, bigger market cap uh, that I'm interested in. Uh, stocks that they like to trend, they trend a lot in the past, so I know that it can give me a very good uh, um, setup intraday to trade. Okay, so this is for the for a big caps. So but BA, this, Baba. this is uh, this is excellent, um, but. Uh, is this is based on your proprietary ex or personal experience right yes okay yes exactly okay so so traders you're really getting something here um <laughs> uh insight to uh you know this takes years to to kind of develop uh but uh anyway thank you for sharing uh joseph exactly because after when i look at this i have my precise way so uh i can put this up one second uh big caps and for example, every single morning I look at my first big six, NQ, ES, Facebook, Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA. And then I will uh, over here jump, for example, to uh, Amazon, Google, BABA, BA, and so on. And I start looking at the daily, uh, four hours, one hour, five minutes, actually uh, also the weekly over here. So I start looking, for example, uh, when, was the opportunity over here too long and you can see my arrows my green arrows right so they come in exactly in the dips so i'm looking to buy those dips then i will see the same arrows on the hourly and on the daily for what concerns instead of small cap land it's a little bit more difficult um, difficult because you need more research uh, i can post this over here because it's a i would say a first main uh filter to find the correct scenario so when i'm looking at a small cap land i look at the scanners and whatever scanner you have and i like to filter in this way so i scan for stocks above 20 percent gainers these stocks uh, have need to have at least 500k volume Years ago, I would have said 200K, but with this new market over here, I need to have a huge amount of uh, um, volume. Therefore, uh, by the way, I just added right now MYNZ610. So I added right now MYNZ610. Uh, you can see on bookmap over here, boom, just 610 I added. Uh, this is my trade, just exactly over here. The top took, let me see. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to tell you, I short over here this area, I add over here this area right now, okay? And now simply working again. So I recycle all my shares again, and I'm having again a huge one on this one. 
So getting back to what we were saying, uh, I want to lose my 500k volume. I check for institutional uh, ownership. So whenever I have a low institutional ownership, I like to use these for uh, um, uh, faders. While if I have a high institutional ownership, I generally look to trade these for long. A float necessary below 20 million, you have to be careful because if you have a multiple flow rotation with no dilution, then you have possibly a long scenario. Basically, it's like what we had today on uh, MYNZ, which we had all the scenario for the long, but you could see I shorted. Then SSR, careful because SSR high volume, micro float is a former runner generally. Pre-market volume versus the flow. So you have really to check if this float is going to flow rotate or not. I start looking at daily chart. I start looking at their position versus the J lines. I start looking if they have dilution. And I start looking if they have, for example, history of faders or history of runners. For example, this morning, LGVN, I had a pretty big stat for this too short because LGVN was a stock that basically on five times that we had a gap, four times faded on the same day, right? So this makes you understand all the process that you have behind traders. Okay, clear? Very clear, Joseph. Thank you so much for, for um, uh, uh, showing this. I, I know this is your proprietary way. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, I just, I'm just very grateful and, and thankful um, uh, you know, uh, you're doing this for us. Uh, it reminds me of the uh, Turtle Traders book with uh, uh, Richard Dennis, uh, who, yeah, who made a who made a bet uh, on uh, you know we we I can teach traders uh, how to trade, or it, teach anyone how to trade, uh, and uh, you know he I think I think the story is like uh, um, he, you know people were uh, ripping him off like taking his process. And then selling it, trying to sell that process, and he got so upset about it. I think he put an ad out in the Wall Street Journal and uh, took the entire back page or something like this, and and um, uh, 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 promoted or just uh, uh, listed his process, so it's public to everybody. Uh, and the the thing that's important here is like understanding and knowing the process uh, is one thing. Uh, now you got to come in and you got to make it your own. Uh, and that's what you're doing in here, looking at some of the details in the order flow uh, in uh, exactly. in your higher time frame and then your lower time frame in book map. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, buddy. Uh, Trader, so the reason why I added my position on uh, M, Y, and Z is because we have a uh, first big liquidity above, you can see. This is what I was saying before. So on these patterns, and yesterday was so clear on, uh, I believe was uh, um, ISPC and PSTV, yes. But look over here, the stock is going up and you basically don't find any big structure of resistance, right? You see that we have over here buyers, 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 all right? But at a certain point, there's a shift. This is the shift. Okay, shift over here between demand and supply. You can put also in balance everything you like, whatever. But I like to see it simple like this. And then becomes a stair step down pattern because this seller moves down, moves down, moves down. So when I see this, so we call it Mr. X plus the J lines setup. And the same thing I did for long, okay? Last month, December, I took more longs with 79% win rate than shorts. The same thing, so for longs. But at the same time, I see that Jalen's, I see this to get, that's my pattern to short. All right? So I hope it makes sense. If you have questions, uh, write to me. Now, LXT is bouncing. Yeah. Uh, we have, I would say, a good cushion by our side. Uh, the last short we did was at 272, so exactly this level over here, where you see this dotted line. 
right now our average is, I would say, pretty uh, in the money. Okay, the the, the price is, uh, uh, I would say, unwinding over here. Good. Remember what we said before: each lower high is the new trailing. So what you can see over here is this new lower high, new lower, sorry, each uh, lower uh, high. And this is making a same higher high, okay, same high. If we break over here, new higher high, I'm getting out. If instead stills unwind, I'm going to hold. And I'm not taking any profit. Why you would take any profit on this if it's still working by your side, okay? Try to, traders, um, maximize your return in the meantime mynz is bouncing my average came down from uh, 1684 to 1622 so my max risk would be that 1622 on mynz <clears throat> no bigger liquidity over here on LXT. LGVN still at lows. And let's watch more closely over here. M, Y, and Z. So I'm always careful on stocks like M, Y, and Z that I have no dilution, they have a micro float, and they have flow rotated multiple times. As I said, my average right now is this one. So adding from that 1684, this was my average. Uh, over here, yes, I took some profits, but adding now my average came all the way down here because I added size. So I have already stop order profits over here to trail in case this goes back up. In 30, I'm out, I'm flat. In this case, you can see how important this is this risk management. First liquidity over here, 1650. Uh, we have uh, a buyer over here holding 10,1640. They're trying to hold the price. You see how they're stacking over here. The bid is 1640, 1645. And now we are above J lines. I would like to see traders a uh, resistance above now 1660. Support 48, support 45, resistance 50. Getting short at 45, 46 if I can. Risking that 50, so waiting to see some pops. There we are. So look at liquidity 7,000 over here. It's the main liquidity that we have, right? Now they're trying to prop it. Sixteen fifty is holding. Now no more support. You cancel over here. Sixteen thirty six.
Talk small uh, small amount of shares, 1640s average. Small amount of shares right now because I'm still playing above the J lines. And I'm risking that 50, 55 maximum. So I'm risking very small, not giving back profits over here at mid-morning, 11 o'clock. What I'm doing is still shorting something that has uh, not huge amount of volume. And we had a fader all morning with this. Breakdown on LGBN. Pop as well on LIXT, waiting for the day lines, but trying to follow one at a time for you. Yeah. So you can understand. So you can see that our level over here of resistance, this was the previous relative high, okay? And that relative high over here together with the main uh, J lines, main uh, heat map. I'm looking at this support over here and this resistance. So I'm looking at the uh, imbalance that I may have between buyers and sellers. So we have demand and supply, buyers and sellers. So they're curling above Jaylands, careful, because you can see over here they're holding the 90 May. I need to see a drop below the 90 May. And it's pretty illiquid right now. It's pretty thin. Uh, we suggest uh, buddy, uh, a lot of brokers out there. Um, Obra is uh, one of the best where you can find bars. If you want to reach out in private. <clears throat> Uh, look over here, traders. They're holding this 27. So if I don't see this working, the next one minute I'm cutting the position. I'm only comfortable trading because it's already a decent five figure for the day. So I'm not really trying to give back anything. Maximum 10%. So if it goes, it goes. If it doesn't go, I cut it. Trend line break right now. The real trend line break is actually over here. So J lines over here dipped. This is the most important thing. I saw that resistance passing from here into here. You see? So they're basically doing what they were doing before over here. So they were pushing this back up and now they're pushing this back down. So we'll see here, but I like this. Now I, I'm more comfortable holding. Uh, below 16, when I see over here, creation of resistance, and then ideally pop into it, and then a fail. All right. Anyone trading today, M, Y, and Z? back above 16 i'm gonna be very quick I just want to check one second lgvn so lgvn faded with the jaylands over here perfect right hopefully somebody took it was this uh trend break over here came down so a very good spot to recycle for short i'm not in on lgvn traders not in uh, and we have still LIXT, as I'm holding. LIXT is a very good stock over here. As we said, it has dilution, has uh, no cash, history of fader, good day line rejection, nice trend line break, good point to recycle.
right back to M, Y, and Z. I cut it right now in the money. So I'm out M, Y, and Z because it's currently the one minute daily. So I expect a push above the 1650. Look at that bid over there. 39.40. So you can see that it's curling, okay? It's cupping. Curling means cup over here above the one minute daily. And it's very possible that we're going to break this 1660. So careful over here. Sixteen fifty, right to the previous relative high. Double top, sixteen sixty. Double top. I'm not in right now. Waiting sidelines. Okay, back to LIXT. So I'm not showing any long because I didn't have any long over here to show you. Besides right now, BTCS. But I didn't do any research on BTS right now being over here with you. What I like over here is holding the one minute J lines. Uh, yesterday, for example, we had NLSP. And I love the way that I use bookmap on this one. So basically what I want to do is too long where's the white. And uh, we had two fantastic longs over here. This dip, uh, this dip, this dip, this dip. But I don't like only to, <coughs> I'm sorry, what's the dip? I'm looking for confirmation, for example, a trend line break. So I'm looking for those patterns together over here. Those are the two main setups that we had. And then we started to fade with the J line and simply went all the way down. So looking, just looking over here at BTCS, uh, similar scenario, dip this morning to the Zealand, dip this morning to the Zealand, but again, I didn't do my due to diligence over here, due diligence work, and I'm waiting to trade. Let's continue to look at M, Y, and Z. And there we are, that's squeeze above 60. So that is important for me, getting out at the right line when we have a curl, okay? So this is called curl on the one minute Jalen's. All right, traders. So popped into that 17. Seventeen, some decent amount of liquidity. Any questions, traders? Uh, Vin Vince was asking about uh, looking at the um, what stocks uh, we're currently looking at uh, here. Uh, yes, all these that you see over here, MYNZ, CNTB, LGBN, LIXT. 
Got you. So as soon so as these you... are the, the main uh, gainers of today. Okay. And and that list. Um, so I mean, once you once you um, make your decision, you just start popping them in the book map, um, and, uh, and and collecting data. Mm -hmm. Exactly, Bruce. Okay. So um, and and that list could be like a you know f today it's four. Uh, it could be ten. Could be twelve. Um, oh yes. Oh yes. Can be even like zero. <laughs> <laughs> So a dump is coming over here on LIXT. I'm adding to my position. Uh, I like this uh, formation uh, with J lines. So I missed over here the re-entry. I like over here the bear flag. I like over here the selling uh, pop over here. Couldn't push. Didn't even get to the heat map. Looking for this unwind. I had entry over here at 308, then added 272. Now added over here at 228. So I'm lowering each, uh, the average each time. And I still didn't take any kind of profit, okay? So now what I'm going to do at 2.35, we bounce back up, I'm gonna trail partial. Sorry, Bruce, if I interrupted you. No, not at all. Uh, yes, McLovin, uh, uh, target 200 GMA on the five, absolutely. That will be the ideal target. So let's, Wait for some selling pressure over here, right? I'm gonna see this going all the way down. J lines below VWAP. Uh, fast J lines is below the slow J lines, so this means bearish. We can do ideally like uh, uh, this. A second. <clears throat> all right. Tell me. I oh, know I do what we got. Yeah. I shorted. Okay. My beer, Bruce is worried that I don't short. <laughs> oh, Mama Bear, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> he'll he'll be all over it, I'm sure. <laughs> LGVN, a possible distribution pattern. So I'm gonna stay one second. LG. I'm not short on LGVN. I missed this trade over here. But if you look at this chart, traders on a five minutes, you can see what I'm talking about. We're holding the five minute Zaylands, which is an important support. Uh, this seems to be a distribution pattern, low liquidity, so contractional liquidity inside a, a bearish pattern like this. And uh, we need to break this low at 1280. So if we break 1280, we'll have a flush. LXT instead is working. So good for our riad started to see some red over here yeah uh so good pattern over here so from our riad right and we are at the three minute zealand still the three minute zealand as well still long way to go long way to go long way to go has almost no support. We have something that 220, but I mean, look what we have above. So definitely holding this for short. And again, traders, I'm holding until the price section is like this, lower highs, lower volume. Uh, watching over here lgvn possible breakdown that distribution pattern so take a look so maybe we can see a distribution pattern right here yeah support is basically nothing
it's hard to uh, it's hard to comment right now LGBN because this is for now is a fader, but there's also not too much to comment over here. It's only very liquid thin thin tape. Uh, for me, 80 fill can wash. This is a distribution pattern, but again, very thin. Meanwhile, traders, oh, M, Y, and Z, somebody really dumped over here. M, Y, and Z. I'm not in on the second one, okay? Uh, look this, this is, I believe it's an algo. Uh, look how they're bringing down the price. Basically every, not even one second over here, they're like changing the price. Uh, micro stair step down pattern. So they dumped over here one buck and a half. I'm sad that I didn't take this. Anyways, still good day. But look this traders. Okay. So somebody over here really wanted to dump size. Uh, let me see also on here. Okay, so finally the trend line break came, you see? We're looking for a trend line break, boom. This is unexpected, unexpected. All right, LGVN is working, so distribution pattern, breakdown, here we are. So again, until we don't have counter trend moves, higher volume, formation of higher lows, this is gonna fade like LIXT, and like right now, MYNZ. Okay, Bruce, 10.30 over here. 11.30, sorry, over here. Uh, any more questions, traders? Uh, no, I think we've got them all. Uh, a lot of chatter here, and, and thanks for the feedback, uh, everybody, on uh, you know Discord and streaming and etc. cetera. Uh, looks by far here um, in the little poll I, I put out uh, that um, everyone prefers uh streaming here in discord uh so uh yeah I anyway uh that's that uh joseph excellent webinar uh the clarity on your trading strategies is uh um, fa facilitates <laughs> your um uh ease of trading uh or precision of trading uh it, it's really really intelligent uh thing to do uh and uh uh, have, have always always noticed it, always liked it. Uh, 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 really, really great stuff. Thank you, Bruce. I own your pizza, buddy. <laughs> oh, I'll I'll take you up on that. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, uh, if there's anything else, Joseph, uh, you want to cover, um, I, I put your um, uh, information in here into the chat a couple times. So if anyone's interested in uh, reaching out to Joseph. Uh, he's he offers mentoring and um, uh, uh, education there, so you can reach out to him directly. You got his website and uh, 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 email, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and special offer in there as well from Joseph. Okay, Bruce, I would like only to say something. Uh, first of all, happy new year to you and all the team. Uh, second thing is today around twelve thirty, we're gonna have a webinar more on. Uh, if you want to follow us on, on uh, YouTube right here, 1230, uh, streaming just like on my wallet position on crypto and doll coins I'm buying for the long term. If you're interested, traders, just join us. In the meantime, thank you, Bruce, for this. Uh, again, uh, see you next week. Uh, thank you, Tarantino. Thank you, Precision. Thank you, everybody. And take care and use your stop loss always. Bye-bye. Yeah.